Um, yeah, for those of you who are in middle school, just letting you know, it flies by really fast. So brace yourself for the ride, I'm telling you right now. So we, we've been talking about temptation. Now, can, can one of you guys give me like a quick little definition, definition of what temptation is? Someone, anybody? Right here. Yes. Peer pressure. Yes, yes, anybody else? Yes, Same. Dane. It's good. Yeah, the, the, the definition of temptation is it's a desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. So, but, but why do we do these things? It's because, you know, the devil tempts us. The devil tempts us to do these, thing, these wrong things in our life. And why does he do this? Now, I, I look at it this way. Our lives, you know, are like a road. And at the end is like the man or woman that God wants you to be, right? And the devil tries to, like, throw these things at you to, you know, get you off this road. Because, you know, he doesn't like, like, you becoming more like Christ. And in my short time tonight, I'm going to share with you three ways the devil tries to tempt us. Now, these aren't just like strictly like the only three ways the devil tries to tempt you. Try to tempt you. These are just three ways that I found the devil like tempts us. And then I'm going to share three ways that you can overcome this temptation. Now, um, and these aren't in any specific order. Like, it's not like from worse to really worse you know it's just it's just like it's just random so the number number one the devil tempts us to hold wrongdoings committed against us and fail to forgive others basically like you know i found it like not being not forgiving others for doing wrong against you and so why does he do this and the reason is, is you got to look at forgiveness and forgiveness is a very very powerful thing forgiveness heals relationships it's what god gives us every single day when we mess up we mess up every single day, and every single day you ask for forgiveness and God forgives you, every time. And it's one of those things that make being a believer like amazing. And in, it's amazing to have the ability for, to forgive. And forgiveness is honestly one of the hardest things that we as humans can do. Like I've, I've had people throughout my life in high school and in junior high, you know, stab me in the back multiple times and do all these you know, do terrible things to me. And, it's, I'm telling you, like, it's, it's so hard to forgive. And some of you can relate with me. Um, and, but forgiving is being Christ-like. And the devil hates it when we are Christ-like. So, yeah, he attacks, like, our ability to forgive, I've found. And number, the, one of the, the second thing is, the second thing is, is he lies to us about things that make us joyful, basically. You could say, like, idols, kind of. He tempts us with, like, money, power, success, things that, um, don't really have much value in heaven, to, to be honest. And the devil, and yeah, these things, these things are, you know, they look good, look really good. They look something like you want to strive for. And but in the end, like, but in the end, the only joy that you can get is from God. Yeah, you, know, you need to be careful to not fall for this trap. Me personally, I have had an idol in my life, and that is the game of football or soccer. When I was younger, when I was your guys' age, all I wanted to be was a professional soccer player. And I trained every single day. I wouldn't miss church in the youth group to try and become a professional soccer player, be the best I could be. Which, there was nothing wrong with that until like that consumed my life. And that's like what I wanted to be. Until I found a balance of, you know, I can honor God while playing soccer. And I split it, you know what I mean? I split it. And like, you know, I'm still training hard and stuff, but it's not consuming my life like it was a couple years ago. So, and then the third and final thing, um, one of the things the devil tempts us is he tempts us, he tempts us to be afraid and discouraged. Um, now, how many of you at, you know, some point in your life have been like super, super afraid and super discouraged? Yeah, there's been times, especially when you get into high school. Um, yeah, the devil does this to try, he does this for a number of reasons. He does this to get you to try and question um, whether you're really loved. And like, of course you're loved, you know? God sent his son to die on the cross for you, for every one of you. And you're loved by your parents, and you, you're you loved. And um, he, the next thing, he, one of the other things he uh, when he tempts us to be afraid and discouraged is whether or not you can conquer conquer a particular sin. Now, I know there's some of us out there, and I know I've dealt with this too, where there's a sin that's just like, 
inside of you that you just it's eating you away you know and you haven't told anyone and it's just it's absolutely just destroying you and you can con conquer sins like this through a number of things you can conquer through prayer and prayer is huge with that um and you can just give when, you, when you're praying just give the sin over to god you know god take this take this sin um just i know it's been killing me for a while um, help me with this help me get through this and the next thing is like open up to like a trusted adult or someone like kevin mama nelson you know leaders around here that you know you can talk to i know it's really hard i've had to do this before but just opening up to someone helps so much like take that pressure and guilt out of your life through that sin um another thing when he tempts you to be afraid or discouraged is when you feel as though you are alone now, when I was around your guys' age, if you're in like seventh, eighth grade, I moved to Mexico and I felt very, very alone. It was terrible. I did not know the language. I did not know the culture. I literally knew nothing. And when you're, when you're at that point, you know, you really just have God. And if you have God and you realize that you have God on your side, he will help you through all that. You'll make friends and, you know, you, he'll help you work through it. Just continue to pray and keep him in your life. And um, this this is why, like, with the whole, like, devil tempting you to be afraid and discouraged, like, this is why, like, you know, in the Bible, it's such a popular theme. Um, it's such a, such a popular theme, you know, to be strong and courageous. And faith and hope, the faith and hope that you have, and God can cast out that fear. Um, there are many people in the Bible that, have experienced probably in every most Bible stories you've heard that those people have experienced fear and things like that when um, you know you talk about like talk about Noah you know Abraham like all these guys David you know all these all these people have you know experienced <laughs> experienced like intense fear you know and discouragement probably in their journeys and um, one of the verses I look at when um, I'm like thinking through fear is. Deuteronomy 31 8 and that is it goes like this it goes it is the Lord who goes before you he will be with you he will not leave you or forsake you do not be fear or dismayed okay now um, I'm gonna run through three quick ways to overcome temptation and the first one is it's pretty simple it's just avoid and flee from it um, there's been stories in the Bible of people physically getting up and running away from temptation and now I know it, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this in any situation, like you're in school and you see the smart kid in front of you, you're taking a test and you wanna like, you know, like see his answers. I would not recommend getting up and running out of the classroom, okay? But you know, just if, you, if, you, if you're confronted with a temptation like that, just catch yourself, just back up, be like, okay, I shouldn't be doing this. Just catch yourself in that moment. Um, the next thing is, number two, expect temptation. The devil is looking for ways to tempt you all of the time, all day, 24-7, okay? Um, something I like to think of is putting on the armor of God. How many of you know what the armor of God is? How many of you heard about that? Yeah, it's basically like, you know, you got um, breastplate of righteousness, sword of the spirit, things like that. There's a specific piece of armor that um, kind of relates to what I'm talking about, and it's in Ephesians 6.16, and it says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, what this is saying is like, Satan is shooting like arrows at you, and these arrows are temptations and his lies, you know? And the shield of faith, essentially what the shield of faith is, like you're blocking it metaphorically, and the shield of faith is, the shield is essentially hanging on to God. Um, it's the, the truth of God in the middle of temptation. You know, and hanging on to God, you can do this by like memorizing verses. Um, Jesus was out in the desert, 40 days or whatever. You know, he was quoting scripture from the Bible, directly from the Bible. And it almost acts as like a shield, you know, deflecting these arrows of temptation, deflecting the lies that Satan puts in your life. And yeah, that's, that's how, you know, you can expect temptation to see it coming. The third and final thing is to pray. Now, you guys are probably like, duh, you know. Prayer is the way God communicates with us and the way we communicate with God. Prayer is essentially, it's aligning our hearts with God's and aligning our ideas with God, so to speak. Um, when we pray, we spend time with him. 
that we can ask him to help us overcome temptation. When you're being tempted, you know, like I said before, start praying. Start praying like Jesus did in the desert. Start praying. It doesn't matter how bad your temptation is. No matter how far you've fallen in life through temptation, um, you know, it's no match for the power of God. Um, and that's just the truth of it. So, um, I think, are we good with time? Yeah, we got five minutes, but you, okay. You um, yeah, so let's pray and um, get you guys going out of here. Um, God, thank you for bringing us all here tonight.